Hey, Ollie. Should we show these guys something cool? This picture has been floating around the internet quite a bit. And as you can see, they've got their soft shackle position like this. Now, I've been telling a lot of people the same thing. Whenever I get asked, this is the best way. The reason that I say that is because this is how you can best protect your soft shackle using our wear pads. Now, was I just lucky? And is it correct that the soft shackles should be positioned this direction? Or Will this way work or will this way work? Today, we're going to find out. We've made up 15 soft shackles. The first way we're going to do it is we're going to try the proper way. Second way we're going to do is we're going to try this, which is an improper way. Then we're going to try like this, which is another improper way. Finally, we have some oversized loops. And we're going to try to see if we can get that loop to pop off the knot. So far, that has never happened. I don't know if it's improper use or improper creation by other companies, but it has gone around the internet that these can possibly pop off the knot. And we're going to test out today which way is the safest, which way is the strongest. Our theory is it doesn't really matter too much as long as it's installed correctly and the knot is properly made and the loop is the proper size. So let's break it down for you. So we've got this attached the proper way, what everyone says the proper way. So we're gonna give this one a test and uh, let's see. Oh, that's not too Here's test number two on the properly set up soft shackle. We've got test number three on the properly set up soft shackle. Okay, so we have set up our knots. This is our last or our second last testing. So we've set up in the worst way possible where the loop is being pulled off of the knot pretty much in a direct line. So we're gonna give that a shot. got test number two for the improper uh, soft shackle setup option number two. On our improperly set up number two where the knot could potentially be pulled out of the loop. Let's give it a go. We're gonna give it the best chance possible by having the knot straight on. Okay, so we have the improper way to mount your soft shackle. Plus we have an extra large loop, so we're giving it the best chance possible to try to pop off the knot here. So. So 
So now we are testing the with the knot in the middle, oversized loop to see if we can get that to, to pop off there. We're gonna have it as the best we can to try to get it to pop off. So our last break here is it's going to be kind of real world where it's sagging down then it's going to pull up and we're going to see kind of where it breaks at. Um, the issue with that is it could pinch in our in our D-rings here. That's kind of how why we always have them set up. But we want to see uh, not break strength, but if we can get that knot or that loop to pop off the knot. That's kind of the goal here. We just got to see if we can actually make that happen or not. Okay, we're done here at the factory. We're done at the test bed here. We've got some really good numbers. We've got three brakes on every option and uh, it's pretty loud here. So let's go back to the house and run the numbers. We're back from the break table and we're gonna break it down for you. What happened the other day? It's a new day. We uh, ran out of time the other day. So we're gonna break down what happened the other day and go over everything with you right now. So we got a pile of broken soft shackles here. We learned a bit. Um, we didn't notice any uh, chance that the loop would pop off the knot or any oddities with our soft shackles when we did our, our test there. What we came up with for numbers, on average, the proper technique, which is proper technique, is this. That came out at 24,339 pounds. The improper technique number one, which is this way, came out at 23,281. So pretty net, it's about just under a thousand pounds, 800 pounds uh, on average. We don't really, there's no real difference in my opinion. I think you can do it either way. Um, is it? safer to do it this way possibly just this is just my testing here the improper technique number two which is likely the worst technique um, again on our on our brakes there was no issue with it coming off the knot or the loop even the loop tucks in under the knot under our knot really well so I didn't see any issues with that it came out at 22,101 pounds and then the big loop, so when we oversized our loop with the improper techniques, uh, we came out at 21,005 pounds for an average. So the most likely chance that you have of a soft shackle coming off is if you don't cinch down your loop properly. Say you leave your cinch open and you just have it on there and it potentially comes part way over the knot before it tightens up so always cinch your soft shackles down and then pull it a little bit to make sure you've got it well cinched and both the lines are are equal we've got one of our soft shackles here with the wear pad on it i'm still going to recommend that this be proper technique because you can put your wear pad over whatever's the most abrasive. Usually it's not your rope, it's whatever you're attaching it to, D-ring, toe point, anything like that. And then you're gonna have your rope, which usually has a wear pad on it. Uh, ours do anyways, a nice soft wear pad that's extremely durable. And it's gonna go on your soft shackle here, and that's gonna just keep any wear to where your wear pad's gonna be. One thing that we do with our wear pads is we have our wear pads removable. So our wear pads are removable. These can come off. So if you have wear and tear on your soft shackle, you can remove this 
check the soft shackle and contact us and put it we can send you out a new one so that just lengthens the the uh, usable time that you can have a soft shackle without it being super worn some companies use a a wear pad that's one piece uh, kind of attached to the soft shackle so it's not replaceable I don't think that that's the best idea because once you wear through that wear pad you can't replace it so that's one reason why we do our wear pads the way that we do them so we noticed with some of the brakes that it was breaking in odd spots like this one here um, if you can see it's kind of got a bit of odd wear to it the reason that we believe that is is because if you look in some of the video we can see that the soft shackle came up on the d-ring and tucked into where the uh, bolt goes through and, and got caught up in there and we think that that potentially cut or got really hot and and broke the wear pad uh, or broke the soft shackle uh, before it should have broke so in my opinion the numbers don't show whether or not your loops gonna pop off or not the numbers are one part of it but when you watch the videos you can visualize how that loop is is tucking right in under the knot and I don't see any way that that could pop off if it's installed properly. You've got a proper size loop and your knot is the proper knot. So those are the three things you got to look for. You got to look for a nice knot with a good edge underneath. You've got to look for a proper sized loop that doesn't isn't oversized, doesn't pop off your your knot without having to uncinch the loop and then proper install of course cinch down your soft shackle pull it kind of snug so that it all the lines are lined up and they're equal so that to me is the best way to install and use a soft shackle is still this technique you can use it this way I don't see an issue with it this way is probably the least uh, especially if the loop is too big it's the most likely to potentially kind of come up and over the knot if you've got maybe a cheaper soft shackle or one that's improperly made so in conclusion I would say it's not false news um, but I don't think it has the potential that a lot of people say it does if it's happened to you i'm not saying it can't happen it can definitely happen if you've had it happen to you contact me i'd love to know what happened or how it happened because then we can learn we can maybe adjust the way that we make ours to make sure that that doesn't happen we're always learning we're always innovating as you guys have seen on our instagram and and other youtube videos we are pushing the boundaries of what we can do every day so any information that you guys have for us, we'd love to hear it, and we will see you on the next one.